Yeah, we're going to do a very different Chlorine the Professor today. I, I'm Mike. I am the brains behind the show. Chlorine the Professor was created to talk about the gaming industry, but to also at the same time use discussions about the gaming industry to springboard into other subjects, like what we're going to talk about today. We just came off of probably one of the most insane presidential campaigns that I have ever seen in my entire life. It was a circus, a freak show. I have never seen a presidential election where we had two candidates who were so equally hated on either side and sometimes even by their own people. And the election's over. The people have spoken. And now we have the aftermath of it. And this message is to, you know, this message is for everyone, you know, on Zort Central and Gamers Beta to hear. But it's not meant for all of you. It's meant for some of you. Those of you who are out there protesting Trump. Now, I never supported him. I never supported Trump. I supported Bernie Sanders and then later Jill Stein. I was not a Clinton supporter. I did not trust her. Not in one iota. She just had too much baggage. She was mired in too many controversies and scandals I just couldn't believe her I couldn't trust her and I just I didn't want her in the White House so I supported Bernie Sanders and when the DNC decided to rig the nominating process and give it to Clinton anyway after they got caught doing it you know, after WikiLeaks released proof that they were rigging the primaries, and after everyone saw that the, that the Democrats were scheduling debates during sporting events so that they would get fewer people watching them, and also scheduling events where Bernie didn't get to debate alongside Clinton, where they just brought them out one at a time to speak. Remember those? And, and then there were the primaries where independents were allowed to come in. Independents who were Bernie supporters weren't allowed to come into some of the primaries. So it was rigged. He was right. And, you know, Trump was right. The election was rigged. And they tried to rig the election for Clinton. And you know they were trying to do it because you saw their reactions when Trump won. Everyone. Everyone was expecting her to win. And then she didn't. And something went wrong during, the camp, during that, uh, that part of the election. We were watching TV. And it was on MSNBC, and I forget the guy's name. He had this board up, and they were getting real-time results from the election. From you know, They were getting real-time um, election data on their screen. 
Well, it glitched out for a while, and before it glitched out, it was showing that Clinton was in the lead. Clinton was winning. After it glitched out, it came back up. It was showing other data. It was showing the actual, true Electoral College vote. And it showed that Donald Trump took Florida. Now, I'm not saying that something was going on there, but, you know, given the fact that what the DNC did during the primaries, and considering who Clinton was the candidate for, Clinton was, she was the candidate for the Washington elites. She was Wall Street's candidate. They wanted her over Bernie. They did everything in their power to make people not want Bernie. They used old, you know, old fears of socialism from the Cold War days to scare people away from supporting Bernie. You know, and people need to stop being afraid of socialism or communism. Now, they, the establishment constantly uses the USSR as an example of why you should be afraid of it. The USSR was not a true communist socialist nation. They were a Stalinist nation. They followed a version of communism and socialism that was perverted by Joseph Stalin after he betrayed and murdered Lenin. The system, as it was meant to be, would be very different. It would be better than what we have now. Way better. Because in a socialist system, it is everyone, the people, own and control the resources and the means of production. Not a select few, not a single political party, not a, 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 not a rich, powerful group like it was in the Soviet Union. That's why they collapsed, because it was a perversion of those ideas. Now, let's get back on track here. So Trump won. Now, why did he win? Part of the problem was is that not everybody went out and went out to vote. I mean, when you've got two candidates who are crap, you know, what's the point? What's the point? I mean, not not everybody is going to go out and choose, oh, we've got two candidates who are bad, let's just choose the lesser of the two evils. People were sick and tired of having to settle for the lesser of two evils. That is what this election was about. That's what happened. People are tired of having to settle for the lesser of two evils. And the people that did come out and vote and voted in favor of Trump are people who are suffering in a different way. They are suffering through this economy, which is, if you're rich, it's great. But if you're not, you're struggling. There's some people out there who are working three jobs and they still can't pay their bills. Three jobs and they still can't pay their bills. People who work at McDonald's and they can't afford to eat there. People who are under crippling debt and poverty and they see no way out of it. And those are the people who voted, those are the people among those who did vote, who voted for Trump. And those who say it's all the all the racists and hateful people in the country all voted Trump. That just shows just how far out of touch with reality they are. 
Trump confused all the political experts during his campaign. He went to the places that they all said didn't matter. He went to the Rust Belt. He went to the places where all the people, where, where the policies of the establishment eviscerated industry in the United States. Where eviscerated local economies. I have a friend. And I've never met him in person. But I talk to him frequently. And he has medical issues stemming from, you know, how him working a lot. And he's been through a lot. And he's suffering with pretty bad poverty. And he's, he's been through a hell of a lot. And he's one of those people that he, he wasn't a Trump supporter. He was a Clinton supporter. But he's one of those people who was in that position where he feels hopeless. And sometimes he's, you know, defeatist to the point of, you know, he's where he's only hurting himself with his, with his defeatist attitude, but he's getting better. And it's people like him, people who are in that desperate situation where they just they don't have money to feed themselves they barely have the money to pay for a roof over their head and that's the people that voted for Trump why? because they were denied the only other candidate who was listening to them who knew what they were going through, who knew the struggle that they were having just to survive. Bernie Sanders understood what they were going through, and that is why they wanted him. And when he was denied them, they went to the only other person who was also listening to them, despite the allegations unproven. None of it's proven. I'm not, I'm not defending him, but none of the allegations of sexual, you know, blah, 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 whatever has not been proven. I'm not defending him on that. But despite that, despite, um, you know, his racist comments, America voted him in. Because they couldn't, they, they felt that they could not trust Clinton. They felt they could not trust her. And I really don't blame them. I don't trust her. And I really would have preferred to have someone else other than Trump. Are we screwed with him? I don't know. Um... He said a lot of things, what he's going to do, and you know, what he said he's going to do isn't necessarily what he will do. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens, and just take it a day at a time from there after he gets into the White House. Is he going to get rid of Obamacare? Maybe. Is he going to try and reverse what... Um, Obama did with immigration? Probably. Is he going to build that wall between the U.S. and, and Mexico? Eh, don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Depends on whether or not he can get Congress to, uh, to agree with him. Whether he can get them to work with him. I mean... It's the first time I've ever seen a. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen a presidential campaign where a candidate's own party despises him. Or let me reiterate, not his party, the party leadership. There's a difference. 
The party loved him. The constituents, the members of the party, loved him. The leadership hated him. They hated him. Because he dragged out into the open everything that they believe, but they will not openly say. Let's get this straight. Everything he did, everything he said, dragged out everything that they believe, but don't have the guts to say. And that's why they hate him. They hate him because he's a reflection of who they really are, who they really were. And who they still are. And then you have all these protests now that Trump is the president-elect. And the protests are all these people who didn't go out and vote. And all these people, all these social justice warriors out there just screaming and hollering. I saw a video of this one woman who was absolutely hysterical and screaming she was going to die. And she needed an ambulance and everything. Man up. You lost. Your side lost. You just ran smack dab into a wall called karma, and you built up a lot of negative karma over the years leading up to this campaign, leading up to this election. You brought this on yourself. And by your attitudes, and the rest of the people who are out there screaming and hollering about Trump, you brought this on yourselves by not giving a damn about what was going on in this country. Not giving a damn about the people who are struggling to live, struggling to survive, struggling to pay their bills. You didn't give a damn. You only cared about yourselves. You only cared about what was in your wallet. You only cared about what was in your bank account. You didn't care about what was happening to other children. Oh, you would, you would go out into lines and you would wave signs saying, you know, to ban abortions and, and stop gay marriage and all this stuff. You are some of the most selfish people I have ever seen. And you... You are the reason why Clinton lost. You are the reason why Trump is president-elect. You. This is your doing. This is your karma coming back and biting, your, biting you on the ass. You brought this on yourselves. You need to own this and own up to what you did. No excuses. No blame blame. None of this bull crap that it was Russia. The Cold War is over. Get over with it. Trump is president-elect because you didn't care. Where was all this anger when the DNC stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders? When they were caught rigging the nominating system. Where was all this anger? Why weren't you out in protests when the DNC was basically crowning Clinton? Where were you? Where were you? If you really cared about this country, if you really cared about people, you really cared about democracy. You should have been out there protesting when that happened. But you weren't. You only went out there and started protesting because you didn't get your way. Because you let the fact that Clinton was a woman and your social justice warrior attitudes cloud your judgment.
Now, all you understand why this is not directed at all of you. Only at some of you. And I know this is not what the usual show is about. You know, this is supposed to be a show about video games. We're supposed to be talking about video games and about what the video game industry does. You know, and what they do is directly connected to other things. Corporate corruption is not unique to the gaming industry. And the political decisions made by the gaming industry is not unique just to them. And that's what this show is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be connecting those pieces and showing you that, you know, the thing in, in the gaming industry parallel what's going on in the rest of the world. That's what this show is supposed to be about. And I know I'm rambling here. Are we screwed with Trump? I have no idea. I am cautiously optimistic. You know, I follow certain philosophies that tell me that Trump was necessary. Because this is a learning process. There are people out there that need to learn a special lesson. And they're learning it now. Now, whether they get something from it and they decide to want, that they want to change things so that this doesn't happen again, it's up to them. And if they don't, we may have to go through this again. We may have to go through something like this again in order for them to finally get it. That's the way things are working now. Because change is coming. Whether anyone wants to accept it or not, change is coming. In a more positive direction. And although Trump seems like a very big negative, a positive can come out of a negative. Positive can come out of a negative. He's a catalyst. Did you know that just prior to this election, I we we follow astrologers, and one of the and most most all of them predicted Trump. Most all of them predicted Trump. I'd say ninety percent of them predicted him. So, let me finish this up here. I wanted this to be, this is completely unscripted. This is just me sitting in front of a webcam, just pouring out my heart to all of you. And if I sound like I hate a certain group of people, I don't. Let me make that clear. I hate the ideology. I hate the belief. I hate the social justice warrior ideology. The political correctness ideology. Which brought us to this point. This whole movement which pretends to be a movement for equality for people. But is actually... Thinly veiled bigotry and intolerance in disguise. And the absolute apathy and selfishness of people. And their inability to give a damn about the welfare of others. And that is what led to us having Donald Trump as president-elect. Congratulations.
This is your fault. Own it. Take responsibility for your actions. What you do next, what you do and how you do it, is up to you. Going out and protesting, setting fires, writing graffiti on public property, that's not going to help your cause. Man up. Go home. Rethink your life. And then get out there and do something positive for the first damn time in your entire life. I'm Mike, the creator of Chloe and the Professor, host of An Old Gamer Plays on the Gamers Bay channel. Thanks for watching through this rambling rant. And the regular show will return next week. Thanks for watching. Peace.